Are you, uh, Dr. Foley? Good to see you again. Yeah, likewise. Uh, look, I'd just like to raise my concerns and, and get your opinion on a uh, submission by the Australian Academy of Science uh, in regards to uh, science disinformation, on, I think it was on social media. Uh, and effectively, they have um, basically want to lobby the tech giants, Meta, Facebook, Twitter, Google, uh, Microsoft and Apple, uh, to censor and harass any Australians who circulate what the Academy insultingly labels client climate denialism misinformation. Um, and uh, I just don't like the use of that word misinformation um, and, and, and the way they've used this, because as you know, uh, I've picked up their energy budgets. They've given me an energy budget with a downwelling radiation of three th uh, 343 versus the CSIRO of 333, a 400% difference uh, between the 2% that the IPPC has said uh, is in the increase of wattage from CO2. Um, wh what's your view on this, you know, social media, who many of whom aren't scientists, running around um, censoring you know, differing views, um, especially, you know, why do scientists get to say what science is when mathematicians, which most science is underpinned by, uh, can't have a, a say back? So, uh, Senator, it's really important that you raise the, uh, the ability to get access to uh, the basic science information. And one of the things which I'm working on and I'm hoping we'll be able to present advice to government is looking at open access of research literature. Uh, at the moment, much of research literature, as you probably will be frustrated by, is behind a paywall. So you yep. want to access uh, information, and it's fantastic that you are so interested in this, and be able to really dig in to, to really get an understanding. And you're not the only one. Uh, just about everyone I have spoken to sees this as something critical. Just because of historical reasons and the way uh, the um, the way with the um, publication and peer review process has evolved over over the years. Uh, when we transitioned from a library, uh, which was solid, you know, in, in reality, you go into a, um, a library, pull down a book, uh, and transition to it being all online, we, there wasn't really a change in the business model, and what it ended up with was less access. So I'm hoping that um, we'll be getting to a point where we're putting forward a range of options, but one of them actually includes an option where we have a central approach to uh, engaging with publishers so that all research literature will be open access to people residing in Australia. Now that's you know, um, a pretty ambitious uh, desire, but I think that will be part of the way of what you're talking about, is getting to a point where um, uh, people can read the actual papers that, that they go to and then um, seeking advice from people if they can't understand it to, to get, it, uh, get that instruction as to how to interpret it. Sure. So I'm hoping that that will help you in your endeavours, which I think are very important. Yeah, geez, thank you. And, and would you agree, and you can take this as a statement, that science should be contestable? Science should always be contestable. In fact, scientists are the best sceptics because you really are evidence-based. And it makes my job really easy because if the evidence is there, um, it's, it's easy saying this, this is what we know. But it's also what we don't know and also where we haven't quite got to a point where there's um, a full and agreed understanding. And that's when you've then got to uh, keep on doing more research until we get to a point where uh, it is uh, evidence that you can trust. I'm glad you said that. I actually moved the motion in the Senate a couple of years ago where I said the three major schools of epistemology were empiricalism, rationalism and scepticism. Unfortunately, Labor didn't vote for it, but I'm glad you've acknowledged the important role of sceptics in science. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Rennick. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.